that was a funny one. These are the Hansons, a very special family. This is Emma. So how is your class? He's, he's, he's two feet one. And Carlton. Two feet. Being a family has been especially challenging. Jordan's the best. This is Vernon. I know. Vernon has lived with the Hansons for two years. I know, Muggsy Bugs. This is Nathan. His mother was killed three years ago, and he's lived with the Hansons since that time. <laughs> this is a unique family, a foster family, part of the child welfare system that is working to protect children and strengthen families who have never needed them more. At the turn of the century, children who needed care lived in a simpler society. Large, extended families often took care of children when parents couldn't. This was especially true for families of color. Children without relatives often roamed the streets. Hundreds of thousands were selected to ride the orphan trains to farms where many worked long hours for room and board. Early cases of child abuse came under the jurisdiction of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. No organization existed to prevent cruelty to children. In 1930, the White House Conference on Children and Youth pronounced foster care an inalienable right for all homeless children. A children's charter proclaimed that every child is entitled to a home and that love and security which a home provides. But today, the child welfare system is challenged as never before as it tries to respond to the problems of an increasingly complex society. Unprecedented numbers of families live in poverty. 100,000 American children and their families go to bed homeless every night. 300,000 teenagers live on the streets without families. One million teenage girls, one in 10, become pregnant every year, placing themselves and their babies at risk. Close to 500,000 babies have been born exposed to drugs. 35,000 have alcohol-related birth defects. The rate of increase in new AIDS cases is higher among infants than adults, and 125,000 children will lose their mothers to AIDS by the year 2000. A thousand children under the age of five die each year from abuse and neglect when parents under stress take out their rage and despair on their children. 2.9 million cases of child abuse and neglect were reported in 1992. Soon, more than half a million children will need foster care, and these children will be more fragile physically and emotionally than ever before. The child welfare system is mandated to serve at-risk children and their families. When children and parents must be separated because of the tragedy of abuse, neglect, or special medical circumstances, hundreds of thousands of foster parents, adoptive parents, and social workers are there to help. This is a big job, and it's important to have the skills and the knowledge you need so you can make an informed decision on whether or not it's right for you. You need to understand what to expect from youngsters at different ages, what their life experiences may have been, and what kinds of behaviors you may have to work with, what it means to work with birth parents, and the impact a new child may have on your children and other members of your family. Then you have to realize what it's like to be separated from children who've become part of your family, or if you're considering adoption, what it means to be making a lifetime commitment to a child. Uh, we've had great support from the agency right from the start. And now we're involved in helping train new foster parents and adoptive parents. Now, Emma's father has been, always been there to help us, too. It's been good for the kids to have more family to be close to. And he understands how to give the kids a strong sense of their own culture. Children need to know something about their, their roots to have a healthy sense of who they are. We understand that we're part of a team of child welfare professionals, caseworkers, therapists, the legal system, medical personnel, teachers, children, and families, and that we all need to work together for the good of the children. Vernon. A neighbor or teacher may be the first to call attention to a child that needs help 
and to set into motion a team of child welfare professionals. Are you sick, champ? I'm taking a nap. It feels as if you have a fever, Vernon. Is your mother home? He said I have to come to school. She won't have time to be a nurse. Well, we need to find out what your temperature is. An examination by a school nurse reveals a fever and burns on Vernon's arms. Vernon's teacher has an obligation under the law to report suspected abuse. The state already had legal custody of Vernon because of prior incidents. Mrs. Davis had maintained physical custody with supervision and a structured program that she was to follow, but she just had too many problems to follow through with it. Child abuse and neglect is a tragedy, and when it can't be prevented through services to the child and his family in their own home, the child welfare system looks to foster care to keep that child safe. Vernon? Dinner time. Vernon. Hey, hungry bitch, leave me alone. I know this must be hard for you, Vernon. You don't want to be here. And you probably miss your mama too, huh? The whole thing is confusing and scary. But there are people that are trying to help her. And we want to help you to be safe. I promise you, nobody's going to hurt you here. Vernon was awfully upset when he came to us. Even when they've been abused or neglected, kids don't want us to be separated from their parents. Life in their birth family is the only life that they know. His mother just hadn't been able to get off of drugs and it turned out that he was being abused by his mother's boyfriends. His father was drinking too much, I guess, and got involved with another woman, including her children and the baby that they had together. This woman just didn't want anything to do with Vernon. Finally, the caseworker helped Mr. Davis to understand that if he wasn't going to be a parent to Vernon, Vernon needed another parent. Then there was Nathan. Uh, he was such a sad little fellow when he came to us. His mama was shot on the street by someone in a car when she was coming home from work. And the police said they were probably aiming for somebody else. They never did find out who did it. You know, that's my mom's favorite one. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's gonna like it here. Probably like the garden at our house better. Maybe. But we won't be able to tell right away. Might look pretty sad for a while, because we moved it. And that's a shock. Leaves might droop some, might lose a few buds. But if we feed it and water it and take good care of it, I'll bet it'll learn to be happy here, too. You want to help me? I guess so. Good. His daddy took it real hard. and pretty much gave up on life for a while. He started drinking and lost his job. And Nathan started getting in trouble. It's taken his father quite a while to get back together. But uh, he's looking really good these days and it looks like Nathan will be going home soon. This isn't the same as raising your own children. These are somebody else's children. Most of them have had terrible things happen to them. They're in so much emotional pain, sometimes physical pain too. It can be hard work, and it takes a real commitment to protect them and nurture them, no matter how hard it gets. Stop it! Emma! Don't touch him, I'll get him! Vernon! Vernon! Easy! Oh! You hurt yourself? Here, what happened? I told him it was my mom's and he went off. I killed him. You sure tried. I did it. Look, roses may look easy to kill, but they aren't. You hurt them, though, that's for sure. Now, you and I are going inside. We have some things to talk about. I don't want to 
the top. You can listen. I think you got some big feelings, boy, and you're working them out on Nathan and his roses. I hate roses. You can't hurt things or people because you think you hate them, Vernon. And you know what? I don't think you hate roses. I think you might be feeling sad or mad or jealous because Nathan got something beautiful from his mama. He talks about his mama too much. He won't shut up. You make him shut up. I know it hurts, sweetheart. And it's okay to feel sad. But it's not okay to hurt other people. And if you do, then you need to make it right. So I want you to help me with those roses until they're better. If we take good care of them, they'll heal up and be strong. They're a lot tougher than they look, okay? Okay. And I think we'll talk to Trisha Walker, your worker. See if she can find somebody for us to talk to about the way you're feeling. Sometimes it helps a lot to be able to talk to somebody who really understands about big feelings. And even then, it takes time to feel better. Sometimes you might feel up one day and down the next, just like a yo-yo. But I know you're tough, just like that rose bush. And we're gonna take care of you so you can feel better. Caring for children means understanding how to protect and support their relationship to their birth family. What you got? My picture. <laughs> You've got eyes just like your mama, sweetheart. Is that good? Mm-hmm. She's got eyes so warm they could melt rocks. Are you mad at her? No, honey. Some of the things she did, the things that hurt you, upset me a lot, and I wish she wouldn't have done them. But as the therapist said, she has a lot of problems, and she couldn't help herself or you. She also said it's important to remember the good times. And you know what? She gave you life. And I'm sure glad about that. You miss her sometimes, don't you, sweetheart? Uh-huh. Is Daddy coming today? He sure is. Well, where'd you get that big muscle, boy? I do push-ups with Nathan. It's big, isn't it? You bet it's big. You're looking real strong. Nathan says I'm getting stronger. I appreciate you making a home for Vernon. I really do. Well, it's our pleasure, Mr. Davis. Vernon is a wonderful boy. And I appreciate you letting me come see him. It, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to Vernon to see his daddy. It sure was nice to visit. So Mr. Davis gave up his parental rights to Vernon with the understanding that an adoptive family would be found that would support contact with his son. It's been two years since then, and he seems like a different little boy. I guess that's why we do this work. It's so satisfying to watch these kids blossom when they're given the care that they deserve. A part of nurturing children is learning to protect their growth and developmental needs. Well, Nathan, I don't think you can count on what your friends think they know about sex. It's a big responsibility. Hand me that wrench, will you, son? Always have been a big responsibility. But today, well, people are dying. And I mean young people. And a lot more young people are becoming parents before they're ready because they're not paying attention to what they've been taught. Here. People are trying to give out the right information, but an awful lot of kids aren't listening. 
You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I hear what you're saying. Caring for a child also means addressing okay, developmental this delays. Number to this number, what do you get? Get tired. Did I wear you out? <laughs> you did so well this week, little man. Do you know you're almost caught up with your class? Our kids were already grown when we started foster parenting. So before we got into it, we had to think about what we were giving up. Free time, having a little extra spending money, just plain living for ourselves, you know? But we really like kids. We have time and a lot of patience. We have a home to share, and we got good training that taught us what we need to know in order to be good foster parents. <laughs> I will see you in church on Sunday? Yes, you will. Oh, Nathan, the youth choir will meet Wednesday night. Will you be there? Yes, I will. Good, 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 good. Good friend. I hear you're going to sing in the children's choir Sunday? Yes, sir. Good, good. God bless you. And Emma, your peace. The Hansons take advantage of resources in their community. <laughs> They meet regularly with other foster parents for support, for sharing experiences, and to continue training. Uh, my kid's foster parents uh, asked me if I'd come and uh, tell you my story. This is Maggie, whose children are living with a foster family. It's hard to do, but they've been really, really good to me, and uh, so I wanted to do it. Um, when they first took my kids away, um, and I screamed and I hollered, but the truth was I was kind of relieved. Um, it meant I could just take care of myself and uh, I, I could use any time I wanted to. Back then, I never thought I'd ever be clean again. Then one day, uh, my caseworker said that I should probably go see my kids. That's when I met my foster parents and they were, they were really, really nice to me. Um, they didn't talk to me like an addict. Um, they talked to me like I could be straight again and like I was a mom who still loved her kids. And then, and my kids didn't hate me the way I thought they would. Um, they just said, well, when are you gonna get in that program and get better? Yeah, well, that, that part really hit me hard. But then, after that, it took me six months just to find the program and um, get into it. And even then, I mean, I wasn't I was sure all the time that I was going to make it. Um, it's, it would be hard maybe to understand, but nothing nothing's ever going to be as high as a crack high again. And, I mean, the, the good side is nothing's going to be that bad again either. I, uh, I didn't take care of my kids. And I did some really, really awful things when I was high. It's, that's the truth. But I've been <clears throat> eight months now clean and um, taking my parenting classes and uh, doing job training. Even then, I'm not always sure that I'm gonna make it. But my my social worker and kids foster parents, they they just believe in me. Uh, I guess that's that's how I knew I could trust them. Yes. <laughs> well come to Maggie. These people treat you better than your family ever did. One thing I know for sure when my kids come home again is that uh, I'm not going to put them at risk. I mean, even if I slip, um, I know how to protect them now. One day at a time, I, th I think I'm going to make it. Reunification with the birth family is the most frequent outcome of foster care. I think most of you know that all of our foster children have been reunited with their birth families. 
but the youngster who is staying with us now can't return home and he's attached to us so we thought well what about adopting him we thought about it a lot the whole family did and we decided it would be a good idea we've had a lot of kids with the same developmental and medical problems that he has because of being born alcohol affected and we feel ready for it this time reunification is not possible adoption by the foster family will be the outcome doesn't she look beautiful <laughs> it's rose's graduation <laughs> ann kowalski is a single foster parent living independently with support is the goal for her 17 year old foster daughter rose who is in long-term care her grandmother came to the graduation even though she's pretty sick and and her older brother too they'll be a part of her life even after she's she's on her own the proudest moment of my time with rose was her graduation and her family too she's the first person to graduate from high school Rose has been through a lot, and she's come a long way in the time that we've known her. She accepts the past, most of the time, but she doesn't let it spoil today. And she's looking forward to the future and planning for it. My birth daughter's the same age, and they've been best friends from the start. Nothing could make me happier. All right, all right, you ready? You ready? You ready? Okay, smile. Whatever the different outcomes of foster care, the goal remains the same. Child welfare professionals working together to help children form relationships intended to last a lifetime. It ain't working. When it is determined that neither kinship care nor family reunification is possible for Vernon, the search for an adoptive family begins. If you're selected as Vernon's adoptive parents, I know you'll find the Hansons to be a real resource. They're very important people in Vernon's life. Well, that's great. We're looking forward to meeting them. They explained to me that Vernon's biggest worry is that adoptive parents might not let him see his father. You know from all your training that this could be a real challenge. Yeah, but we think we can handle it. Well, we'll continue to work together on it, and if it works out, then I'll set up a meeting with the Hansons, okay? You know, uh, at the same time that I'm so happy about having Vernon become a part of our family, part of me is sad because another family had to come apart so that this could happen. Well, I'm on bedroom. Uh-huh. It's small, but it's yours. Actually, it's a closet, but that's handy, since you can reach everything from the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan will soon be reunited with his father. I guess you know it's been hard for me to talk about things. Yeah. I guess that's because I feel so bad about how things happened after your mama died. I just didn't know what to do with all the hurt I was feeling. So I couldn't help you with yours. Only thing I knew to do was drinking. And that's worse than doing nothing at all. I know there were times when I was drinking that you were the one taking care of me. I didn't mind. But it's not supposed to be that way, son. I'm the father. It's my job to take care of you. And I just couldn't do it. That's why you were getting into trouble before you went to live at the Hansons. Pain will make you do some stuff, won't it? <laughs> yeah. They've taken good care of you, though, and I'm glad for it. I just wish I could have been the one to do it myself. It's taken me a long time to get myself back together. But I've been getting a lot of help from the agency. And I can promise you one thing. It's gonna be different from now on, boy. For one thing, 
you're going to have a 7 o'clock curfew for the rest of your natural life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, well, who are you, huh? Who are you? <laughs> Nathan went home last week with his father. They both look good. They'll be coming over for dinner this weekend. And the other day, we met Vernon's adoptive parents at the meeting at the agency. Trisha, Vernon's worker, was there, and the adoptive worker. Most of the time, Vernon seems really enthusiastic about it. I think it's a good plan for him. He'll have his first pre-adoptive visit in a couple of days. They're an awfully nice young couple. They wanted all the information they could get about Vernon's life with us. We're sure going to miss these boys. It's this way every time they go. But this is what we do best. Helping youngsters heal so that they can be reunited with their families. And if that's not possible, uh, working as part of the team to help them move on to wherever they're, uh, they're meant to be, whether with kin or adopted or living independently, we help them get there. God bless my mama wherever she went, and my daddy, and Emma, and Carlton, and Nathan, and Grandpa, and the people gonna adopt me, even though... Even Feelings though, are mixed at the time of transition. Even though I want to stay here. They're really nice. Emma and my worker said I need a mom and a dad to grow up with. And that's all. <coughs> we say amen. Amen. Sadness and joy sit side by side in Vernon and in those who have come to love him. So somebody takes care of her where she went. I light this candle for Trisha Walker, Vernon's foster caseworker, whose support and counsel makes this work possible for us. I light this candle for Emma and Carlton. Two of the finest foster parents I've ever worked with. Can I have the candle, please? I like these candles for Vernon's muscles. The only thing around here that is stronger than my rose bushes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I like this candle for Vernon and all the joy that he's brought us. And may he take that joy wherever he goes. And I light this candle for every child. May they all have people who care for them, as Vernon does today. Emma, thank you so much for taking such good care of Vernon. I'm a little nervous. Oh, but... don't worry about it. I know you'll do fine. I'd swear he's bigger than he was at our first visit. Well, he ate so much cake last night, I think he's bigger than he was yesterday. <laughs> But you call if you need to. Thanks to the team of child welfare professionals, Vernon will have a chance at life. Monica, thank you so much for bringing us all together. And the basic rights denied to so many children. The right to be protected against neglect, cruelty, abuse, and exploitation. The right to safe housing health care and an education that prepares him for the future. The right to be a unique person and to be protected from the violation of these individual differences. The right to prepare for the responsibilities of parenthood, family life, and citizenship. The right to maintain relationships with people who are important to them. 
and the right to a stable family and safe, nurturing relationships intended to last a lifetime.